and what we were doing is we really wanted to be about the Father's business. And, you know, we had struggles, and we had, you know, we messed up here and there. And, but um, there's so many things going on right now. You know, we have jobs and responsibilities and careers, and we're trying to provide for our family, and the world's going crazy, and, you know, and life happens. And it, the only thing that we could really do, you know, one of the most important things we can do is make sure that every moment we're about our Father's business. Let me read this to you. Luke 2, 39 to 50. So when they had performed all things according to the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own city, Nazareth. As the child grew and became strong in spirit, filled with wisdom and the grace of God was upon him. His parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And he was 12 years old. They went up to Jerusalem according to the custom of the feast. When they had finished the days as they returned, the boy Jesus lingered behind in Jerusalem. And Joseph and his mother did not know it. But supposing him to have been in the company, you know, that big caravan of, of they were moving, they went a day's journey. They thought, well, he's someplace, you know, he's probably with, you know, cousins or running around someplace. Um, but after that day's journey, they sought among him, among the relatives and acquaintances. So when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem. <laughs> we were praying in the back. And when you're a parent and you lose sight of your kid for like just a second, you get that panic, right? Right. So all of a sudden, you're oh, imagine Mary and Joseph. Oh no, we lost God's son. <laughs> we had one job. <laughs> so uh, I can imagine what they were feeling. It was after three days. Wow, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers, both listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard were astonished at his understanding and his answers. So when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you done this to us? Look, your father and I have sought you anxiously. And he said to them, Why do you seek me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? But they did not understand the statement that he spoke to them. Jesus was simply saying to Mary and Joseph, Look, I wasn't lost. I, I, I just wasn't with you. And why'd you worry about me? Why were you anxious? No matter where I was, you would have found me doing and being about my father's business. At the age 12, Jesus obviously knew his father's business and his mission. That needs to be our focus every single day. Every moment this conscious awareness of being about our Father's business. Jesus, no matter what he did, wherever he went, whatever he thought, whatever he was saying, he was all about his Father's business. And if we're to be like Jesus, that should be our mindset. I know the world's going nuts. I know it's crazy. There's fighting and all this evilness that seems to be the predominant message out there right now is evil. I know it's difficult, but there's no worry when you're in the presence of the Lord. There's no, shouldn't be anxiousness and anxiety and stress when you're in the presence of the Lord. And Jesus is saying, hey, didn't you know I'd be telling people about the love of the Father, the hope of salvation, and the plan for eternity for those that love him and serve him? And I should be telling about my Father's business. That's what I do. That's our mindset. Whatever we think, whatever we say, whatever we do, wherever we are, if somebody calls you, no matter where you are, what you're doing, you should be about your father's business. We all should be constantly aware 24-7 of what we're doing, what we're thinking, what we're saying, how we're acting. Are we about our father's business? Because the enemy out there is trying to put us out of business. He doesn't want us doing anything that's praiseworthy, God-worthy, anything that brings glory to God. He wants to destroy us. Just destroy us. Right now with all the evil and deception going on in the world, the enemy just loves to keep so busy focusing on the things of the world and keep us on the world's business, not God's business. We cannot lose focus on what our Father's business is. Since the beginning of the year, we've been sharing these messages, and I felt like there was this change happening. Ever since the beginning of this year, I felt like, God, there's something you want. There's something you're doing here. And I know there's new people coming in. That's great. And, and there's people that are giving their lives to the Lord. And I'm telling you, God has a purpose for every single one of us. There's a reason why you're here. 
God wants us out of the world's business and into his business. Because his plan for us is way, his business plan is way better than any plan we can come up with for ourselves. And there's us that, that can testify that we've done things on our own and it led us nowhere. In the past, I've been sharing a frame for what Rock of Life's business is. I've shared this before and I'll share it again. It's about every six months or so I say this. It's the three E's. Here we want to exalt God. Love him, honor him, worship him, be all about him. We want to edify believers. We want to build the church. We want to lift people up. We want to teach each other, teach each other to how to grow with that love of God to get to know Jesus more and more and build up our wisdom, not just knowledge, but wisdom that makes us the best that we can possibly be as servants and lovers of God. And we want to evangelize. We want to tell others about how God, who God is and how much he loves them all. That salvation is offered only through his son, Jesus Christ, that he is the way, the truth, and the life. We want to make disciples. We want to baptize them. Matter of fact, we're going to have another baptism on September 10th. Right, Joe? 10th? Yay, amen. So if anybody wants to be baptized September 10th, be prepared again. Or if somebody wants it next week, Curtis, we'll, we'll bring the baptism out, whatever you want. But we have to go out and tell people because we've got to be about the Father's business. We've got to build up the church. God also calls us to be a house of prayer. Pray. We want to pray constantly. It's not the last thing we do. It's the first thing we do. It's not the response when something happens. It's the action we take before something happens. Not just for ourselves, but for others. We want to take requests and challenges. And, and we want to help people pray over their burdens and their struggles and their victories. We want this place to be exactly what it's intended to be. The house of God where people come in. Be built up, grow the relationship with God, and then walk out of here stronger than when you walked back in. Third thing is we want to train and build people up in that family business. We want to strive to live holy lives. God doesn't expect us to be perfect, but he expects us with all our heart to strive for holiness. That's what 1 Thessalonians says. It's to please God, not try to please this world. This world is useless. But God wants to use us to go out and affect the world. One by one. Person by person. There's a reason why each person is here. There's a reason why I talk to people individually. If anybody ever called my number and says, hey, hey, let's get together and talk. I, I got questions. You know, have a cup of tea. I'm not a coffee drinker. Tea. Yes, absolutely. I will make the time and do that. Matter of fact, I got a couple of people here. George, a couple of people I, I hope a cup of tea with. We want to be separate from this world because we have no business living the way the world lives. We can't. We can't. It's, some, it's becoming so evident. This world is corrupted. God's world. God's world is the place we want to be in His presence, His ways to do the things he wants us to do. And it is a fight, and it is a struggle. And we lose people like Chip. They, things, are, things happen. You know, it is challenges, and we look for jobs, and we try to reconnect with family members, and we have prodigals in our family, and, and there's tough times, and there's fires and things, and God intended none of this. Matter of fact, I, I, last week's Jonah message about it, there's something in your life that you can identify that's rocking the ship, that's rocking the boat. Take it. Throw it out of your life. Just don't let it continually sit in the boat and just rocking. Get rid of it. I know sometimes a process, but sometimes God says, this is in your life. It's in the way of you and me. Will you just pick it up and throw it out already? Yeah. So I posted that message online and I, I felt a need to, 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 to promote it. So on, on Facebook, you, can, you, know, you pay a few bucks and it goes out to basically anybody. Most times when I do that, it's very encouraging. And a lot of people respond. Once in a while, I'll get somebody that says something horrible. And I got a couple of messages this week. Uh, one person questioned my um, manhood. <laughs> and I, I wanted to put this message. I go, you, can't, you don't know me, buddy. <laughs> um, uh, so... Uh, I wanted to respond back and go, hey, if you came in, heard my testimony, you wouldn't question my manhood. So, um, 
And another person said, you know, after the Jonah message, he basically typed up and said, hey, um, um, with all the suffering and the pain in the world, which is like the, one of the number one questions I get, why, why do, you know, if, if I saw a child being hurt or something, I would intervene, I'd stop it. Why doesn't God do that? Why doesn't God do stuff like that? And I, I don't like responding on social media. I'd rather talk to somebody one-on-one. -on -one. I don't like text messages and like for serious things because it's misunderstood. And I wanted to write him back and I talked to Debbie. I go, what do I say on here? What do I put? You know, oh, you're so wrong. You know, or do I say, hey, come into church and we can talk about it. But, you know, it's, sometimes it's dangerous. You got to be careful with people on social media. So I just prayed for him. Um, I, just, I just prayed for him. But we'll get that sometimes. And the thing about it is to be about our father's business, we're going to come against people that really need Jesus. I could have responded, I could have done something, you know, in a wrong way or a, a difficult way for him, but I just prayed, you know, because he needs Jesus. He needs to know the love of God and know that it was people being about the world's business that created this world that we're in right now. This was never God's intention, it was never his plan. So here's a challenge for us. We're not just to work the family business on Sundays. We're to be about the Father's business seven days a week. God's business never closes. He never puts a close sign on the door. So wherever we are, for me, everybody, everybody from this point forward has to start thinking Father's business. The way we talk, the way we treat each other, the way that we live. Why? So we could be the best father, we could be the best mother, the best husband, the best wife, the best son. The best daughter, the brother, the best sister, the worker, the servant, the friend, the stranger that helps others, shows with love and kindness. We need to be the best servant that we can be in our father's business. I would never want, you know that song we sing, we were talking about the other day, um, I couldn't remember it, no, we sing it all the time. Um, I think, no, not I thank God, we did one today. Um, I hope you find me. Praise in his name no matter what comes, right? Because I know where I'll be without your mercy. So I just keep praising your name at the top of my lungs. Good God Almighty. God, thank you. Good job. Get extra prayer. Thank you, Lord. Okay, so. <laughs> but it's true. I don't want, like, and the clouds open. There's Jesus. Come meet me. And I, who wants to be doing something you shouldn't be doing? It's like. Dear Lord, please find me just praising your name at the top of my lungs. Don't let me be in the, about the world's business. And the thing about it is you have to be conscious that God's with us 24-7. If we're temples of the Holy Spirit, we grieve the Spirit when we're not being about the Father's business. I know that's a challenge. I'm not saying we're all going to be perfect. But we need to be about the Father's business. We get that through our salvation, through our relationship with the Son, Jesus. God's business, you know, he's the best restorer out of everybody. You ever see these shows on TV? We're restored in an old 1957, you know, Chevy or whatever. And it's like better than ever, better than you. That's what God does to us. He takes our broken down body, spiritually, mentally, physically, emotionally, and he restores it back the way we should have been in the first place. He restores us spiritually, physically, mentally, emotionally. He puts back together our spirits, our hearts. He can rebuild our relationships, our family, our marriages, our children. Our God even can create, can recreate the image of God we should have been in the first place. He created us in his image, but we get off on the internal. We mess up our spirits because we're about the world's business, not God's business. We can grow our relationship every day with God. And everybody say, well, how do you do that? How do you do this? Now, it's easy. The more time you spend with God, the more you're in his presence, talking with him, listening to him, reading his word, meditating on his word. Just getting to know who he is by spending time with him. Our purpose in life, who we are in this world, we grow our relationships with God every day, grow deeper in the love of Jesus. Whether you've known God for a day, a week, a year, a month, 10 years plus, God's always in that business of restoring us and making us to be who created us to be. 
We want to be led by the world and not the word. The word, not the world. The, the world is just a mess right now. I can't even watch the news anymore. But that doesn't mean I shut down from it. God expects us to go out and engage in the world. And be about the Father's business means going out making disciples and baptizing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Telling people about Christ. I'm going to give you one quick example. I'm going to switch gears here. Um, um, my dad's a musician. It was a musician. And his dad was a musician. And if you go back a couple more generations, I come from a long line of guys that were musicians. Singers, musicians. And back into like the mid-1800s. Um, I had kind of a, a well-known person. In my family, there was also a singer, a guitar player. People didn't know it that much. But um, then my dad's dad, my dad's my dad. And then it's, it was our family business. It, it's something we valued. And um, my dad played bass here for a while with Chip. And um, now you can see it like in my, my daughter Mary who's up here. And she sings and she's kind of in the father's business too, right? It's, it gets ingrained in you. It's like you can't shake it. It's just part of who God's created us to be. God didn't create us to be part of this world. He didn't create us to be part of the world's business. The world just ingrains hatred, anger, unrighteous anger, lust, immorality, jealousies, fits of wrath, selfishness. I want nothing to do with that world anymore. But it's kind of cool to see like, you know, my father, and my daughter, and my grandfather, there's one time, I don't have the picture anymore, but uh, my grandfather, before he passed away, came and visited us in paradise. There was a picture of me and my dad and him playing guitars in, in, in the room. And, and that's like the father's business. That was the legacy thing. And that is great. You know how cool it is to be part of the father's business? To, to, to have a peace that you can't get being part of this world. God is looking for those who would become his children and be about the Father's business every single day. So remember, no matter where we are, if there's a word that you leave with today is, you would ask yourself, wherever I am, whatever I'm doing, whoever I'm talking to, am I being about the Father's business? Amen? Give the Lord some praise. Amen. Now, speaking about the Father's business, last week I told you I had this kind of a thing to tell you guys. I've been thinking about it. I, think I might have overplayed my hand a bit. And just like, it's like, what are you guys, what are you going to say? Uh, I, I'm actually, it's actually really important, but um, it's about being about our Father's business. Um, I want to take time to tell you about Rock of Life a little bit. Uh, we've been growing lately, and that's great. And... Um, and there's a shift that's kind of happening since the beginning of the year. And I want to share with you, we've been in existence for nine years. As a matter of fact, September, we have um, uh, nine years of being open at Rock of Life, four years in this building. Um, and we've always been under the denomination of the Church of God out of Cleveland, Tennessee. And you guys, some of you may not know that, but we're part of a denomination, uh, Church of God of Cleveland, Tennessee. And they are, they're, they've been fantastic. They've shown us love and care and this great concern. And, you know, the, what, what shook me out of the world's business is I, Debbie was going to uh, Jubilee on the Ridge up in Paradise. And it was a church of God. And I needed this Holy Spirit slap to wake me up. It was great. I, I was on the carpet and just going, yes, this is what I needed. And, um, and it's, it's, they've been so wonderful and supported, supportive. Um, the part of the message is the beginning of the year I felt that there was a shift changing that God's been doing things at Rock of Life and the approach and the messages have been slightly different than than maybe before or even with the Church of God um, how they present um, the message um, so uh, myself and council members have decided and we voted to detach from the Church of God this past week um, and they've been wonderful, fantastic. I spoke to the bishop this week. Um, so we're going to become non-denominational. Um, I really feel in order for us to 
go where God wants us to and to deliver the kind of messages that God wants us to and to reach the people that God wants us to, uh, we need to do that as a non-denominational church. Okay? Is that it? Okay, okay cool. <laughs> Good, I'm glad you applauded. I've wanted chicken wire up here just to go, what? What are you doing? <laughs> so, um, and it's, it's, it's nothing really, you know, it's, it's nothing really negative. I just really believe the Church of God has been wonderful and they're amazing. It's just that I really believe that there's this part of a, of a larger denomination sometimes may restrict us locally. And I've really been focusing on being part of the, the pastor's council here in Chico. There's like me and six other pastors. And we're really, what can we do to press in locally and reach the community and then you know, Judea, Samaria, outward, but we, we want to focus more locally. So I want to, I really truly believe that we need to put all of our, our energy, our resources, our focus, everything on, on the local church and here and our people in the church and, and the people out there to, to bring in new people and, and that need Christ and to you know, just see how God's going to just restore lives. And so a um, couple of the things, um, part of this um, is letting you know that we're not going to be like an island to ourselves. I believe in the unity of the true churches. Okay? And connecting with some of these other pastors in, in town has really focused me on what an opportunity we have to band together with other churches that are either denominational or non-denominational, but to have the freedom to be able to focus in on how God works here at Rock of Life, because we're different. God works differently here. And here's what I'm trying to say. There's people that walked in and have said, oh, this is home, this is great, and they belong here. And there's other people that walked in at Rock of Life and said, oh, okay, nice, but it wasn't for them, and that's cool. They found an, a, another true church of Chico where they were supposed to be. So just a couple of people were, well, be careful of this, be careful of that. Okay, um, I know I'm trying to focus here. There are many true Bible-believing churches in Chico. And I, wanna, I want us to band together with them. You know, uh, we're, we're one a part of the body. We're one part of the body of Christ. And I need you guys to know that I want us to be more part of the local Christian community here to reach the people that are lost. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, we've been talking about this. And the other thing I want to talk about real quick is uh, accountability and authority. And some people use the word covering. Uh, Jesus Christ is our covering. You know, he, he's our authority. And so, but what does that mean for us? Well, that means that uh, I have a council that I'm accountable to. You know, they challenge me. They're not a bunch of yes people. I, I, I meet with two different pastors every month, uh, Gaylord Enns and, and Mike Gleason. I meet with them and I tell them what I'm going through and what I'm struggling with and some things I'm thinking and they give me their feedback. I meet with the pastor's council every month. Um, I, I know I need accountability. Um, I, I know I need mentoring and growth. I'm still growing too. So there's that, right? And I have my, my, in fact, my counsel. Will you guys stand up? Mike, Linda, who else is on my counsel? Debbie, Zach, Rod, please. Tommy's here. Yeah. Eric, Zach, yeah. So I have a council of nine people now. You guys can sit. That's cool. I just want them to know. But we meet every month and we talk about, we pray, and you know, we, we, we try to follow exactly what God's business plan is for Rock of Life. Last couple things. Um, being more community focused um, and prayer, mark your calendars uh, from September 15th until the 24th, September 24th. We're getting together with nine other churches uh, in, in Chico, Grace, Neighborhood, um, uh, Evan, excuse me, Hope, Hope Church, Life Church, and we're going to have 10 days of prayer. So what we're going to do is on the 15th, and I don't know the order of the churches yet. We're still planning that. But like, for example, on the 15th, uh, which, what day is that? A Wednesday, I think? Uh, we're all going to meet, like, let's say, at, at Life Church. It all, it, anybody that can go, and we're going to pray. We're going to pray for the prodigals and the lost and ourselves and the churches, and we're going to pray that we be about our Father's business. And then the next night, 
we're going to go to like uh, Hope Church. And the next night, we're going to go to like Grace. And the next, so like 10 days in a row. On Friday the 22nd, it's going to be at Rock of Life. So anybody that can show up from any church, any community, that they can come in here and we're going to do some praise and worship, and then we're going to pray. Then on the 23rd, Saturday, there's another church. And on the 24th, it's all going to end up at Neighborhood Church in the Dome. And it's going to be just a night of praise. They put together a worship team, and I get to be uh, honored. I get to, I get to be part of it and play guitar on this worship team, and we're going to just have a night of praise. Like, and every night it's going to be 6.30 to 7.30. It's only an hour. Mark your calendars. Go to one, go to two, go to all of them, whatever you can. But there is a concerted effort to reach Chico and reach the lost and tell people about God. And we can only do that if we're strengthened up church, if we're ready about the Father's business, and we get our lives in order, and we start to focus in on God, and we put on that armor, we don't take it off. Amen? All right. <laughs> Last thing, and then we're going to pray in close. And then I got, we're going to do one more song. Um, okay. So I, I really want to be Holy Spirit minded. I really want to let just Holy Spirit do whatever he does here. And when I say rock of life is different, I'm just saying the approach here, I've just never seen such a close-knit family of people that are real, they're real, and they love. And it's a simple message of, hey, look, God loves you, wants you with him forever. Okay? But as we grow a little bit in all these kids that we're getting in, this building is becoming a little small. And we're staying here, we're not moving. But what we've been praying about, matter of fact, Brian helped us. Brian, matter of fact, Brian, where are you, brother? God bless you, man. Did you know Brian helped us find this building? He's a real estate for Caldwell. And uh, he helped us find another building that's right across the street. So what we did is we leased another building. It's right across the street. It's a 45-second walk. You just go around that building right there, and right there is going to be Rock of Life Fellowship Event Center. It's got four offices, a foyer, and a really huge banquet room. Okay, we can use it for youth group, Bible studies. We can use it for events. We can use it for receptions, showers, birthdays. And we ran into a problem. We were trying to hold Bible studies here or classes, growing your faith classes, because we'd use the class in the back, but they, we had to be out by like 9, 15, 9, 30, so the teachers can come in. But now, if we want to do like a four or six week series, we just walk across the street or you can park there and drive over. And what you could do is we, you know, Pastor Tommy, he can hold a class from like 8.30 to 9.45 and not have to rush everybody out. We can take our time and provide more opportunities for us to grow. Not just maintain what we have, but do more than what, we, what we're doing now. Um, for example, we've had weddings here and that foyer is getting really small with the coffee shop and the amount of people now. We were using that as a multi-purpose room, but now we'll have this big, huge multi-purpose room complete with a seascape mural. <laughs> It's got a whale, and it's got starfish, you know, it's got Nemo in the corner and Dory. We'll paint Jonah in there. Okay. I'll put a Bible verse. He created every creature below the sea and above the earth. We can put Genesis in there. I haven't decided if we're going to paint over it or not. Okay. So, um, but it's exciting, right? And I just believe that in order for us to continue to do what God's doing, we need to be non-denominational. And all about Jesus. All about the Father's business being led by the Holy Spirit. Amen, right? Amen. With, I, don't, I don't want to identify markers. Because if you say this denomination, you get this picture in your head of what that church may be like. But if we're Rock of Life Fellowship, then we can have the identity that God puts on us. That's about as clear as I can say that. <laughs> Okay, thank you. But um, I don't want to just maintain what we're doing to connect people to Jesus. I, I want to do as much as we can, more and more. Amen? Amen. Amen. Exciting, right? <sighs> There's a lot, huh? Yeah. Um, last, last thing. I'm doubly accountable as a shepherd. I don't know if you guys know that, but I'm doubly accountable. If I mislead you, if there's a bad teaching someplace, if I get off on some track, I want God to slap me upside the head. You know, I, and it never will happen, okay? <laughs> but I'm just saying, I need accountability. That's why I have a counsel. That's why I have mentors. 
That's why I'm constantly trying to learn and grow and and because there's no way I want to mislead you guys ever, ever. And I truly believe this is what we're supposed to be doing. I'm doubly accountable as a shepherd. And if, if I'm wrong, and I've said this to a few select people, but I'm going to say it to everybody. If I'm wrong about something, I want God to correct me. You know, if I, if I do something wrong, I mean like mislead or do anything wrong. I want God to correct me. Because he'll say, hey, you know, you need to be doing this. This is what I want you to do, and I, I want correction. But if I had it right, if, if the vision and mission that God gave to us is correct, and I'm the shepherd, and I lead you, and I let man or something take me off of that original vision and mission that God gave us, if I adjust to people rather than God, then I'm really messed up. Because now God can say, you had it. You had it, and you let people change you. I gave it to you. It'd be worse than saying you had it right since the, you had it wrong since the beginning. You had it right, and then you messed up, and you you adjusted when you shouldn't have. Does that make sense? So, so let's pray. Father God, I thank you for who you are. I thank you for the leading of uh, of Rock of Life and and the leaders and the mission that you have for us. I thank you, Lord, that for the rest of the year that we're going to be all about the Father's business that we're going to be led by the Holy Spirit, Lord, that we're going to accomplish things you want us to accomplish, that we're going to be on the path you want us to be on, that people's lives are going to be changed and restored, and people will be coming in, Lord, because they want that relationship with you, and we're going to build up the family of God the way you want us to. We're going to say the messages you want us to say. We're going to let the Holy Spirit be free here the way he wants to be free. We're going to, we're going to read the word and absorb it and learn it and grow, and we're going to, st even though that there's life comes against us, the enemy comes against us, we're going to stand strong, we're going to throw things off our boat. We're going to keep praying. We're going to keep learning about the word. We're going to, even when we make mistakes and we stumble and fall, we thank you for putting people, putting people around us that lift us up. We thank you that your mercy is brand new every day, that you give us grace that we don't deserve, and you withhold the punishment that we do deserve. We thank you, Lord, that we're going to be Jesus-centered, Jesus cornerstone, honoring Father God, led by the Holy Spirit. That's the church that you want here for Rock of Life, and that's who we're going to be. So we give you praise, we give you glory in Jesus' name, and we all said, Amen. 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 Give the Lord some praise. Okay, that wasn't so hard. <laughs> Nobody threw anything. You got to get the band back up here. We're going to play a song, and we're going to close and let everybody go. And if you want prayer, you can come up prayer after the song. Uh, we're going to do this to honor God um, and just thank the Lord for who he is. And we played a little bit a while ago, and we still do this song every once in a while. But I also want to do it uh, to remember my, my brother Chip, but to give God the honor. Because when he played this song, man, that guy could worship and pray. Amen. Amen. eternity. The Lord has love that will always last forever. The Lord has love that He wants us to receive. And when the world can feel His presence, and when the world can feel the sea, it's up to you and me to tell them the Lord has love that's higher than a mountain, wider than a valley, deeper than the sea. The Lord has love that's higher than a mountain, wider than a valley, deeper than the sea. The Lord has love that was there from the beginning. The Lord has love that will never fade away. 
The Lord has love that is always overflowing. The Lord has love that He has for us today. And when the world can feel His presence, yeah. And when the world can feel and see, it's up to you and me to tell them the Lord has love that's higher than a mountain, wider than a valley. Deeper than the sea. The Lord has love that's higher than a mountain, wider than a valley, deeper than. Bring it down, here we go. The Lord has love that's higher than a mountain, wider than a valley, deeper than the sea. The Lord has love that's higher than a mountain, wider than a valley, deeper than the sea. The Lord has love that's higher than a mountain, wider than a valley, deeper than the sea. The Lord has love that's higher than a mountain, wider than a valley, deeper, deeper than the sea. Amen. Amen. Lord, I just give you praise and glory for who you are and what you're doing. And Lord, help us be about the Father's business. Thank you for blessing us so much, Lord. And we just give you praise in Jesus' name. We all said. Amen.